13 Week Theater is supported by Patreon. Subscribe now and get exclusive early access. There are many reasons to consider The Simpsons one of the most influential TV shows of all time. Not only did it almost single-handedly save the Fox network from oblivion and blaze the way for the second wave of primetime animated series, the sheer number of creative writers and producers who got their big break on the show would change the face of television for decades to come. Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein had been writing together since the age of 14, including runs at Humor Magazine's National Lampoon and Spy. A spec script that they wrote for Seinfeld failed to sell, but it got them hired to develop a story idea by Conan O'Brien for a Simpsons script. The resulting episode, Marge Gets a Job, eventually led to them being hired as staff writers and eventually moved up to showrunners and the brains behind the Who Shot Mr. Burns storyline. They even got a chance to break the fourth wall by voicing themselves in the Itchy, Scratchy, and Poochie Show episode. No, no, the animal chain of command goes mouse, cat, dog. D-O-G. A uh, dog? Eh? Isn't that a tad predictable? In your dreams, we're talking the original dog from hell. You mean Cerberus? After leaving The Simpsons, Oakley and Weinstein started work on a new adult cartoon that they called The Downtowners, but MTV's announcement of another cartoon with a similar title led them to change it to the show's setting, Mission Hill. Oakley said that the show was set in a highly fictionalized version of Boston's Mission Hill neighborhood, crossed with San Francisco's Mission District and Chicago's Wicker Park, among other locales. Leading the voice cast would be actor and comedian Wallace Langham, comedian Brian Posehn, News Radio's Vicki Lewis, voiceover artist Scott Menville, voice actor and comic Nick Jameson, and future sponge Tom Kenny. Mission Hill's concept had three inner-city Gen X roommates, artist Andy French. Hey! Wanna buy an air conditioner? No thanks. Genius and slacker Jim Kubak. Ow, what happened to the couch? We moved it over there last week, remember? Oh, yeah. And neo-hippie Posey Tyler. Kevin, oh my goodness, what's happened to your inner light? Oh, uh, what, is it stained or something? Well, n well, no, but it's become dim and venal and wicked, like Andy's. Whose lives are turned upside down when Andy's teen brother well, moves in. would you be willing to... Did you tell him yet? Hi, Andy. So, guys, are we going to be your roommates? What? Kevin, honey, please go wait in the other room. Here's some fig boss. Wait a minute, you want Kevin to come live with me? It'll just be till he graduates and goes off to college. You see, he wasn't thrilled about moving to Wyoming and... Uh... Were you ever planning on consulting me about this? You know, I have better things to do than take care of my stupid kid brother. A 1460 combined SAT is not stupid. A dog who eats mothballs, that's stupid. Among notable storylines were the roomies adapting to Kevin's eccentricities. This meditation tape is awful. It's not soothing me at all. In fact, I'm beginning to grow infuriated. That's not your tape, Posey. It's Kevin. He's been doing that since he was a kid. He uses it to drown out distractions. I, I should have mentioned it to you when he moved in. Bling, bling, blong, 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 a bling, blong, a bling. Bling, you can't bling, stop blong, him. Blong, blong, Watch. Bling, blong, Yo, Pac-Man, how's it hanging? Bling, it a bling, it a blong, blong, bling, it a bling, it a blong, blong. Kevin, Hitler's on the phone. He wants his hair cut back. Your turn. I'm a leaf in the wind. 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 Now, what was it you wanted? Andy's job in a waterbed store run by vaguely ethnic and ethically challenged Ron. I told you, knock before you come in here. I did knock. You yelled party time and then there was silence. Oh, I fell asleep. Eating donuts. 
and Ooh. Andy's long forgotten appearance on hey, MTV's The change. Real World. You're seeing Skiz on 10. You want Skiz on 5. And Skiz ain't going to take it down for you or anyone else. Let Skiz do what he wants to do. That's what he's all about. The essence of being me is all about totally being me. I can't do it about this. Dude, back off. Dude? Please don't call me dude. I know you, man. You like to stick your ass out car windows. Who doesn't? Huh? Oh boy, here it comes my favorite part. Hey dude, we're into being sensitive to other people's feelings. If you're not down with that, keep your ugly self away from here. I hear you. You're getting Andy on 10. I used to be Andy on 6, and once I was even Andy on 3 and 3 eighths. But now I'm Andy cranked to the max. Deal with it. You know what your problem is? You got no class. Peace, man. I am out of here. The show was produced by Oakley and Weinstein. A Bill Oakley, Josh Weinstein production. A ah, Bill Oakley, Josh Weinstein production. Ah. A Bill Oakley, Josh Weinstein production. A Bill Oakley, Josh Weinstein production. Along with Warner Brothers Castle Rock Productions Company. This is WPIX, home of the WB Television Network. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Mission Hill debuted on Warner's WB Network on Friday, September 24th, 1999, and a week later, it had already found itself on hiatus. The reason? Bad overnight ratings on the two episodes that had been shown, the pilot and episode three. Episode two, where Andy joins the PTA to get close to Kevin's teacher, was rejected by the network and shelved. The WB brought the show back in June, intending to burn off the rest of the 13 episodes that had been ordered, but the ratings remained low, and after only five more episodes, Warners pulled the plug for good on July 16th, oddly enough, after airing the cliffhanger of a two-part story. There have been lots of theories about why Mission Hill flopped on the WB, but the most likely answer is that it had the misfortune of debuting just as the network was reinventing itself. The debut of Dawson's Creek in 1998 marked a turning point as the netlet found itself transitioning away from being the hip option for disaffected 20-somethings and slowly morphed into a bastion of upper-middle-class teen drama. This is the WB, America's fifth network. The only network directly targeted to young adults. Our stars and series continue to redefine a generation. Mission Hill was a perfect fit for the WB when it was greenlit, but a perfect example of what the network was starting to disassociate itself from by the time it aired. In an odd twist of fate, in 2002, Warner-owned Cartoon Network found itself with a hole in the schedule of its late-night programming block, Adult Swim. Someone in programming remembered this quirky little cartoon that Warners had produced and still owned the rights to, meaning that they wouldn't have to pay to run it. So they dusted off Mission Hill and started running it. Adult Swim, all kids out of the pool. We've got a brand new show, Mission Hill. Now the bouncer's coming over. Be cool or you're going to get us all kicked out. Good evening, gentlemen. I see some ID there, sir. Oh, oh, how flattering you should ask. Ever since I shaved my beard, everyone has been... Sir, if you're not 21, I'm going to have to ask you to... Oh, God, it's happening! Please don't arrest me! I want to go to Yale or Amherst! Mission Hill, coming next Sunday at 11 to Adult Swim. Finally surrounded by other weird, hip, and edgy cartoons, Mission Hill finally had a chance to find its audience. And not only found them, it became a hit. Well, at least in terms of Adult Swim's ratings, it was... Warner added it to the late-night lineup on General Interest Cable Network TBS as well, and the show was also bought by Teletoons, the Canadian equivalent of Adult Swim. Some interest was expressed in making more episodes, 
But in the two years that it passed, everyone involved in the project had moved on to other projects. The show, heavily edited to remove the pop songs that littered the soundtrack of the original showings, was eventually released on DVD in 2005, and the show maintains a loyal following to this day. So much so that Bill Oakley teased a possible spin-off featuring gay couple Gus and Wally in 2020, although nothing seems to have come from that project. Eh, but then again, this is Mission Hill we're talking about. The show that proves you can't keep a good tune. Okay, slightly mediocre but funny. Tune down. <laughs> 